All right, so it's been four or five weeks since I got a video out. I've actually just been on this big streak of guiding and doing some personal hunts. I think I guided three mountain goat hunts, four archery elk hunts, and a moose hunt, and maybe something else in there too. But anyways, I figured I'd come back with you with a short video on preparing hearts. Hearts are something that everybody leaves in the field, and I don't understand why. When you look at a heart on a moose, elk, deer, they're basically about the same size as the two tenderloins, and from my point of view, they're just as good. It's usually the first piece of meat that me and my family eats. And I call them meat because I don't put them in the same category as I do other organs. If you clean them up right and you eat them when they're fresh, they're much closer to muscle meat than other organs. They're nothing compared to liver or kidneys or anything like that. They're really just a nice big hunk of muscle that I think everybody should utilize. So I wanna show you guys how to do that. It's really easy. To be honest, they're just as easy to prep as a backstrap or a tenderloin. Heart is best if you eat it fresh, preferably the night you kill the animal, the next morning with breakfast, that's gonna be the best tasting heart. But if you are gonna freeze it, you've gotta do this either way if you're gonna immediately cook it fresh or freeze it, but this is very important if you freeze it. Don't freeze the heart like this. There's all these valves on top and then you've got the cavities of the heart. And think about it as nature's meat bell pepper because that's really what it looks like when you start to, to cut the heart up and the thing that happens is in these valves right here in these arteries whatever they are my biology and anatomy is a little bit rough at this point but what happens is you get a bunch of blood that goes down in here and coagulates if i turn this heart over you're gonna see this kind of stuff that comes out, it's coagulated blood, very equivalent to just bloodshot, right? So if you've got bloodshot stuff on meat, you're not gonna leave that bloodshot coagulated material on the meat because it'll impregnate the meat with a bad taste. That's the first thing you see butchers cut off the meat and get rid of is that stuff, all that bloodshot stuff. Well, these hearts are full of it in these cavities, just the nature of the heart, right? So if you're gonna freeze it, you have to get rid of that and then obviously if you're gonna eat it fresh, you need to get rid of that too. So that's the first stage. What I generally will do, just take a fillet knife, a shorter fillet knife is a little handier. I'll just go to the top of the heart here, basically where the, uh, this kind of rind of fat is. I'm gonna go around and just through that rind of fat that's on the top of the heart and just cut off all these valves. Basically, you chop the top of the heart off, right? All those valves and everything. You look down in here, you've got coagulated material in here. The best way to deal with that is to wash it out. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna run this to the sink and wash this out, get it cleaned up, and then I'll show you the next part of the process. Okay, so if you wanna freeze the heart, you can freeze it at this point. You've gotten rid of the valves, you've gotten rid of all that coagulated blood. You can freeze the heart this way, it'll store pretty well and that's the way to do it. You can store it a little bit further along the way too once you have it sliced up, but I personally think that they freeze better if you freeze them whole like this before you cut them. So this is the stage that would freeze the heart if you don't wanna eat it right now. The next stage, if we're gonna eat the heart fresh, is to get rid of all this tallow fat, whatever you wanna call it. This is where a fillet knife is very handy. And I like to do this before I split the heart. It's just a little easier for me. Freaking bees. Little cocksucker. Fuck, dropped him right into my freaking shoe. Okay, all right, so that's the second step. While I've got the heart still intact, just get all that crap off of here. Not crap, the fat tallow that borders the top of the heart. Now I'm gonna split the heart just like a bell pepper and show you the next stage. All right, so you've got two big cavities, this one and this one. You can see here, you can split it. So what I like to do is I like to just go in here and fillet into the cavities. And what we're trying to do is like the concept of a bell pepper, right? Like when you split a bell pepper and you get it flat, that's the same idea that I do with the heart. So here, I'm opening up both cavities. I know there's more than one cavity, or more than two cavities for all you doctors and cardiologists out there that are watching this, but it just looks like two big cavities to me. Two open cavities 
here and then a chunk of meat in the middle which is great meat and so the first thing I do is I'll go here I like to keep the the base of the heart like the outer heart is one piece so I do this by staying up kind of high on that on that rib of the heart let's call it and I clean that out and then I clean that part out separate but this piece what I do here is any of the veins, you know, remaining tallow, remaining coagulated blood, I want to get rid of that. Kind of a rind you can get under with your fillet knife. And that'll, you can pick up a lot of the, this like veiny stuff. And the veiny stuff is really the only thing I worry about because that, it's not that it tastes bad really, it's that the texture of it's pretty darn chewy. As you can imagine it's kind of got like a tendon a tendon type of texture to it some people don't even bother with it they just cut it up and eat it I, and i don't really blame them it's if you're willing to chew a little bit if you're gonna eat you're gonna like turn into fajitas or something i mean the reality is who cares right so that is what your heart looks like when it's ready to get sliced all right so the last stage you basically have a nice hunk of meat here like I mentioned before, this is another stage where you can freeze the heart like this if you want. Get all You've got all the stuff that's going to affect how it keeps basically taken care of. So if you want to freeze it like this, you can. I suggest you just roll it up, kind of like you would flank steak or something like that. You can vacuum pack it and you can freeze it just like that. Something like that. But what I'm going to do is we're going to use this for fajitas or chop it up into eggs for breakfast or something like that. So I'm just going to thin slice it right now. And as I thinly slice it, if I miss some coagulated blood, some of that vascular stuff, I can take that off at this point. So what I'll do is I try to go pretty thin because it is pretty chewy. It's not like it's, a, you know, it's, I compare it to a tenderloin in terms of how much I like it. But in terms of its tenderness, it's not near a tenderloin. So basically, I'm just going to go slices like this. You know, slices like that right here would be like, fij like fajita level slices is how I would describe it. All right, guys, so that's basically it. Pretty simple process. I hope you get the chance this fall to use it. And if you have some other way that you prep heart or you've got a favorite recipe, please leave that down in the comments. If you found value in this video, do me a huge favor and like it and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys next time. There's gonna be a bunch more videos coming out. I've got a ton of footage from this last four or five weeks of guiding and hunting. So I look forward to being a little bit more consistent. Should have one out pretty much every week. So I'll catch you guys later. Good luck out there.